What would a potential trade look like between the Sharks and the Penguins? I joined Hunter from Locked On Penguins, where we discuss Eric Carlson and why the Penguins actually make the most sense of all the teams. So we look at kind of the fit, and then we get to the brass tacks and actually try to figure out a trade between the Sharks and the Penguins. So all that and more on today's episode of Locked On Sharks. Your Locked On Sharks, your daily podcast on the San Jose Sharks. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello, welcome to a bonus episode of Locked On Sharks. My name is J.D. Young, contributor at San Jose Hockey Now and Inside the Rink, and I want to thank you for making Locked On Sharks your first listen, proudly a part of the Locked On Network, where we cover your team every day or three to four times a week right now as we are in the off season. Um, if you want to be an everyday, all you got to do is just follow on wherever you get podcasts or you can watch this on YouTube. So Hunter and I, we, we chat about Eric Carlson, um, kind of why the Penguins kind of make the most sense and a lot of parallels between when the Sharks first acquired um, Santa, or when the Sharks first acquired Eric Carlson from the, the Ottawa Senators to the potential of the Penguins acquiring Eric Carlson from the San Jose Sharks and how teams looking kind of to make Eric Carlson that last piece as they try to, you know, win one for their aging core. Um, so we, we discussed that. We discuss kind of, uh, you know, we, we come together with a trade. We do what Kyle Dubas and Mike Greer can't do. And we actually come together with a trade that is beneficial for both parties. So uh, without further ado, Here's my, me and my friend Hunter discussing Eric Carlson. J.D. Young of Locked On Sharks. And this is something, J.D., that we probably should have done a couple of weeks ago, but maybe some of both of us probably thought a trade would be done by now. But I think all these teams just really don't want to do – well, I think the teams that want to acquire Carlson want to do the deal, but the Sharks are being a little bit more patient. But in any case, really appreciate you coming on this episode. Oh, no worries. I mean, yeah, the Eric Carl, at least it has provided us with plenty of content. And that is what this is all about is manufacturing that content in the doldrums of the summer. And uh, Mike Greer is doing his job there. So that's what more can we ask for? <laughs> it's about to be July 25th. We're recording this on Monday night. And yeah, we're at the dog days of the offseason. And Eric Carlson is still providing us quite a bit of content, especially over the weekend here at JD. There is an article well, from Sweden because Eric Carlson won the Golden Puck for this year, Sweden's best hockey player for the country. And during the interview with the reporter, he obviously addressed the elephant in the room, which is the trade situation. Mm -hmm. And the biggest thing I took away from that is he's just ready for this to be over. I think he wants to be traded any, any second now, to be honest. And it sounded like to me when I was reading through it, he, 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 he it sounds like he has the say when it comes to well, I think – well, he also has a say because he has to do the movement clause, but he has yes. the full say when it comes to where he wants to go. And I think that could be the main reason why a trade hasn't gone through yet because maybe he's still thinking it over with his family or something like that. What was, what was your main takeaway from that article? Yeah, I mean we we, we knew this was coming to Sharks fans, right? We knew Eric Carlson would be traded. Um, we knew that – this has been a possibility for a while. There was talk of him being traded at the trade deadline. The Edmonton Oilers were huge, were huge players in that. Um, nothing was able to come to fruition, especially with how difficult and complex this trade is going to be whenever it does happen. Uh, but, uh, you know, like you said, Eric Carlson does have a full no movement clause. So it doesn't matter if the Arizona Coyotes come up and say, hey, we'll give you guys five first round picks and and you don't want to retain any salary. If Eric Carlson's like, I don't want to go play for the Coyotes, it doesn't matter. Sorry, Robin. I'm just picking the Coyotes out of the hat. But um, it, it that that's the thing, right, is it, it seems like my career is going to work. You look last year, right, Brent Burns. Brent Burns, a little bit older than Eric Carlson. He's done everything you could do in the league except for win a, a cup. They worked with uh, Brent Burns to he he had a three team no trade like um, they worked with him to get him to Carolina, who wasn't actually one of the teams that was on his no trade list. But they worked with him to get him to Carolina. I think it's going to be the same thing, right? It's going to be a we want to make sure kind of every asset, every avenue is is, is looked at and explored. Uh, and Micker is being patient, right? And if you go way way back to when Eric Carlson got traded from ottawa to san jose 
that didn't happen until the eve of, of training camp. That was a mid-September trade. Um, so I kind of have no reason to believe that this, you know, what was the saying? Uh, deadlines kind of, you know, spur action. And I think once we start getting a little bit closer to the training camp and if there's still, that's, I think when teams will start to put in those final, final offers. And if you're Mike Greer, what's the rush, right? Um, you're going to get the same package now that you would in September. And you might get a better one if a team gets a little bit more desperate. That's going to be the big question because I think a lot of people have been just thinking like if it gets closer to camp or closer to the season, is the price going to go down where the Sharks are going to be like, okay, we're just going to get rid of him because we don't want him on the team heading into the season. And we also know that he doesn't want to be on the team heading into the season. And with the Penguins, I mean, they're willing to wait right now. They have one salary arbitration case left in Drew Connor. That's on August 4th. After that, they have the buyout window that opens up the second one. And maybe that's Mikhail Granlin, maybe that's Jan Ruda, something like that. But they can wait. They they have the patience here. It's just all about how much longer do the Sharks want to wait with this because this has turned into a game of chicken. Yep. No side has blinked yet. And I think Mike Greer is pretty happy about that. I was listening to the DFO rundown today with Frank Cervalli and Jason Greger, and they were both talking about how it sounds like a lot of these teams that have gone trying to go after Carlson, they're like, okay – you don't want to do anything right now. We're going to take the rest of the month off. Call us in August if you want to try to make a deal. And that's even worse when it comes to the dog days of summer. But yeah, I mean, it honestly just seems like at this point, there's really not much going on. I mean, do you expect this to go into camp or do you think this is going to be similar to the, the trade that we saw a few years ago when he went to San Jose right before training camp? I think once we get closer to training camp, um, I think that's when we'll see a little bit more action with it. And Mike Greer and David, head coach David Quinn both said, we'd be happy to have Carlson back. Um, you know, it's not like if you don't trade him now, it's not like you can't trade him during the season at the trade deadline. Um, yes, there's risk of Carlson re-injures himself or anything that could happen. But again, it's Carlson still has four years left on his contract going into the season. It's not like, you know, he's, he's got to be an R, uh, UFA or anything like that. There's, there's plenty of time. I think, though, for both parties, we, we know the Sharks aren't going to be competitive. And for the Penguins, who are trying to squeeze one more run out of this core that they have, adding a guy like Carlson, who we'll talk about where the best fits possibly are, um, adding a guy like Carlson can add a little bit more uh, kind of juice to the or gas to the tank here. So, um, but again, like you're, you're Mike Greer, right? You know, you're not going to be competitive. This is your last big asset. You traded Brent Burns last off season and people were pretty underwhelmed by that. You traded Timo Meyer, and we'll see, you know, I think that, that the initial run didn't look good after the draft getting Quentin Musty. I think a lot of fans are a little bit more happier about it, but this is kind of your last big piece that you're going to be able to trade. And, you know, I know there's hurdle and Couture, but I don't think those guys are going to go anywhere for a while. Vlasic's unmovable and you have a bunch of young guys who are going to be starting to enter into the league. And I think this is the last big piece. So if you're Mike Greer, you need to hold out for the best possible offer because you're not going to really have any big, big pieces like this um, to, to move. And I was going to ask you about that because you know, I'm of the opinion that you know I don't think the Sharks are going to get that much in return just because they don't have a lot of leverage. But it, it it seems like to me they're hoping that one of these teams is going to get desperate enough to throw them a pretty big offer, and then they're like, "Oh, okay, we're glad that we waited." But it seems like also to me at the same time, maybe the Sharks aren't valuing the cap space that they're going to get when they make the trade because I think that's going to be a pretty big asset you know whether you're retaining 20 25 30 percent we can get into that yeah. a little bit later they're not valuing the cap space asset of that right now and i think that's another big reason why you haven't seen that trade yet because they're still looking at getting young pieces back that can help them in their rebuild and teams like the penguins they're willing to take carlson off their the sharks hands they're just not willing to be like okay we're going to send you this massive package and in a perfect world, Eric Carlson should be worth so much because he just had over a hundred points. this past yes. season. But when there's only a couple of suitors, there's only so much the sharks can get in return. Yeah. And that, I think that's uh, an interesting point because the cap space, right. But it's, who are the sharks going to sign? Right. Like yeah. Matt Dumba. Cool. Like there's, 
you know, like it's there's not like there's a plethora of douches out there kind of sitting there. And the team, the Sharks shouldn't be signing anybody, right? They should be trying to get assets that you could flip at the trade deadline um, or take swings on guys like Phil Sedina that they they did they signed this offseason. You're trying to kind of you're in the roster churning phase of, of their rebuild right now. And you shouldn't be using that cast space. Maybe you utilize it during the trade deadline to help facilitate another deal for somebody else. But um and the Sharks going into next season, they're going to have plenty of cap space if they want to be aggressive in free agency. And you know that the cap's finally going to go up, um, you know, going forward. But, uh, you know, I think for them, they, yes, the cap space would be nice, but it's not like a big thing for them right now. In the future, maybe having some of that cap space when you have to start re-signing some of your younger players, but that's for a problem for future Mike Greer uh, to deal with, not with, with right now. And I think for him, it's get the best possible package you can get back whether it's picks or prospects or nhl ready guy or young nhl players get the best possible uh because this is your last card when it comes to big trade pieces going forward you make a good point about that because you know you discuss tomas hurdle logan gutscher but they're not going to be bringing back the return that carlson <clears throat> excuse me should be bringing back but that wraps up this first seven coming up in the second segment we're going to get into what some of the best fits are for carlson i obviously know what my answer would be but we have to get into what JD thinks is the best fit for Carlson. But before we dive into that, our next partner is AG1, the Daily Foundational Nutritional Supplement that supports whole body health. I drink it literally every single day, usually around 8.30, 9 a.m. Eastern time when I wake up for work. I usually honestly drink it right before I have my first cup of coffee for the day because it gets me started the right way. All great athletes have one thing in common. They take care of their bodies. And a huge part of that starts with optimizing whole body health. It's a micro habit that delivers micro benefits. And this helps just about everybody take great care of their health every single day. If a comprehensive solution is what you need for your supplement routine, then try AG1 and get a free one-year supply of vitamin D and five free AG1 travel packs with your first purchase. Go to drinkag1.com slash NHL network. Again, that's drinkag1.com slash NHL network. Check it out. All right, we're back here in this episode of the Locked On Penguins podcast. I'm Hunter Hody. That is J.D. Young of Locked On Sharks. So in the article as well, J.D. Carlson did confirm that he has spoken with members of the Penguins, especially Kyle Dubas. There's been reports that he has talked with Crystal Tang and Sidney Crosby. Latang especially has given the Penguins his blessing on trading for Carlson. Sometimes, you know, franchise defensemen can be a bit weird with that stuff. But, hey, Crystal Tang is a little bit of an old man now. He's won three Stanley Cups. I think he can give up maybe some of his top power play duties to a guy who just had 100 points <laughs> this past season. But he has given his blessing on that trade. He's also currently spoke to the Seattle Kraken, the Toronto Maple Leafs, and, of course, the Carolina Hurricanes, though they just signed Tony D'Angelo on Monday. I'm not really sure what that means for their pursuit. When it comes to best fit for you, J.D., who do you think fits that bill? I think you actually have to go between the Penguins and the Kraken, if I'm kind of going. Um, the Penguins, like we mentioned before, they're, they're aging core. They're... Almost like when the Sharks acquired Eric Carlson and aging core trying to make that one run, right? And I've granted the, the Penguins have a couple uh, banners up in their ceiling and the Sharks don't. But you you could see, right, um, you had Joe Thornton, you had Patrick Marlowe, you had Logan Couture, Tomas Hurdle, Timo Meyer coming into his prime. You had all these guys and Joe Pavelski. Um, Eric Carlson was supposed to be the last piece, right, to kind of get them over the hump. And if he doesn't tear his groin, I fully expect the Sharks be to – Beat the Peng or not the Peng to beat the uh to beat the Blues and beat the Bruins in the in the Stanley Cup. I, I Eric Carlson was even with a torn groin. He has 16 points in 19 playoff games. He had was nearly a, a full my my running joke. He has a point per game on half a PP. Like what else could you want from this man, right? Um, but it would make a lot of sense, right? Coming off his his best season, statistically his best season, um, adding some juice to the this Penguins offense, which. I mean, outside the top guys, right, it has struggled to kind of produce some points and be consistent, especially on the, that middle and bottom um, kind of, of forward units. And Eric Carlson, um, the man can provide offense. He was making Noah Gregor. And, I mean, go look at the Sharks roster last year. and <laughs> Look at the guys he was playing with. Um, he was – and he still put up 101 points last year on his terrible Sharks team. And granted, he's probably not got the same – 
the way on this Penguins team to just go out there and score points because the Sharks needed him to score every point possible. Um, but it makes a lot of sense for a team like the Penguins to try it. If you want to try to get one more for, for Crosby and, and the gang um, to get in a guy like, like uh, Eric Carlson um, for the Kraken, who I, I think would also make a lot of sense, right? An up and coming team. You don't have that star yet. Um, I know Matty Beniers is well on his way to being a star type of player, but Eric Carlson's a legitimate star would be your first legitimate star. And they would go from a fringe playoff team to kind of a dark horse um, Stanley Cup team, especially if Beniers, um, you know, kind of continues to develop. Maybe if Shane Wright can, can surprise and make the team out of training camp or, you know, you have a lot of pieces there and, they have solid defensive foundation. Uh, they have a lot of guys who can chip in, but they don't have that star power guy. And I think those are the two teams that would make a lot of sense. They also have the cleanest cap, right? They have no issues with their cap space going forward, and it would be the easiest transaction out of out of the group. So, yeah, I mean, even after they just signed Vince Dunn to that, I believe it was a little over seven million per for a couple of years, and he just had a great season. They still do have the cap space, and they have the young players that I think the Sharks would really want. In a deal, the Penguins really do not have that. And JD and I will get to constructing a trade that works for both the Penguins and the Sharks at the end of the show. But the Kraken definitely do have the young players to make it work. They have the picks and they're starting to develop a pretty good prospect pool. They, they are, if they really wanted to take a run at it, and I know they have, and I'm not sure how much involved they still are, they definitely could. You know, as for the Penguins, you're right. I mean, they're they're all in it to win one more in the Sidney Crosby, Evgeny Malkin. Crystal Tang era, it would make the they team. Should be. As as long as Sidney Crosby's on your team, yes, you should be trying to win another cup. That is, is the same thing. Like you have a generational player, as long as he's on your team, it's the same thing. The Sharks, right? You had Joe Thornton. You try to win a cup until you just can't anymore, and then you try to you figure out the future in the at some other point. But you keep trying and taking swings at it until it just the wheels fall off basically <laughs> heck yeah i mean you know that better than almost anyone on this network heck you know patrick marlowe joe thornton brent burns mark edward vlasic when he was still really really good man those sharks teams from the late 2000s to early 2010s even the mid 2010s they were very very good i mean we saw both these teams playing the Stanley Cup final sorry jd by the way but <laughs> <laughs> i had to i'm sorry it's okay it's okay it's okay. Uh, it'll, it, it'll, well, it'll all be good at some point. I, but, you know, get, to get back to what I was saying, you know, the Penguins, they need to be more of just a fun team in general to watch. I know a lot of fans out there who have just been kind of bored watching the team these past couple of seasons because, I mean, outside of the top guns, there really hasn't been that much there. And Carlson would especially help them offensively. The Penguins were 21st in the league this past season in five-on-five scoring. That's not good enough for a team that has one of the best top sixes in the league. If you can get him, put him on your second pairing with someone like Ryan Graves, Marcus Pedersen. We'll get to that in just a second, considering Rob Rossi's report. That would be best case scenario in my eyes. Now that I think about the second pairing with for Carlson, JD, was he as bad defensively as a lot of people make him out to be this past season? So he... You're not paying Eric Carlson eleven half million dollars to be a shutdown defenseman, right? Yeah. He is a game-breaking talent offensively, and you have to think about the Sharks, right? They they kind of were playing a all gas no break style because they just didn't have the horses to kind of compete night in night out. So um, Eric Carlson was put in charge a lot to go go do stuff and make us at least semi relevant. And you you talk about the five one five scoring, like Eric Carlson had one hundred one points last year. 75 of those were five on five. This is not Eric Carlson just dominating on the power play because the Sharks power play unit was power play. One was okay. Like it was Logan Couture, Tomas Hurdle, you know, some, some guys who've been around the second unit was just uh, like, I had to play second unit power play minutes because they just didn't have enough guys to, to go put out there for uh, the second unit was basically just let the first guys get a rest for 30 minutes or 30 seconds. So Eric Carlson, he's a five on five machine. Defense, yes. You need to put him with a strong stay-at-home defenseman as, as his partner. Um, but it's easier to find that than it is to find a guy like Eric Carlson who can legitimately night in, night out, when some, when he touches the ice and he's feeling healthy, he can be the best player on, on the ice. And it doesn't matter who else is there, Connor McDavid, Sidney Crosby, whatever. Eric Carlson can be the best player on the, the ice that night. And we saw it 
random nights in December where Eric Carlson just like, I'm going to just put up a hat trick tonight. Or I'm going to put up five points tonight. Um, multi, multi, I think he had five games where he had at least four points last on a, a, a game. Again, go look at the Sharks roster last year and tell me who is, uh, other than Timo Meyer before he got traded, who is a threat to score um, at any given time? It was Eric Carlson doing majority of the work. And the Penguins have the perfect partner for him if he is not included in a Carlson trade, and that is Marcus Pedersen, who ranked in the 87th percentile for 5-on-5 defense this past season in the 81st percentile for 5-on-5 offense. He has been linked to the Sharks. J.D. Rob Rossi of The Athletic reported that the Sharks are interested in him. Not surprised considering he just had the season of his life, but there are that is probably he is probably one of the only players or just any assets in general that I would not give up to get Eric Carlson just because he is that good of a defenseman and he would be a perfect partner for Carlson. But yeah, I mean, it just, it makes sense for so many reasons, even if the, with the Penguins over the cap, they have mm-hmm. ways to get under ne- never underestimate team, a team's ability to get under the cap with this kind of deal. Now, JD, before we get to our final segment, I, I did have this question for you with the retained money with when it mm-hmm. comes to this. So it sounds like the Sharks are not budging on, I think it was around 20%, which takes it down to, I believe it's 9.5 million, if my math is correct. Somewhere around there, yeah. Around there. Yeah. I know it's been reported that teams want them to retain 25%, 30, maybe upwards of 40. In order to get a deal done, do you think the Sharks are going to co- have to come off their asking price of 20%? I think so. I think... If you look at right, you have to remember when Eric Carlson signed this contract. And it's kind of uh, he signed it summer 2019. Entered the first year of the contract, summer 2019. Um, this season we had a little thing called COVID, right? And then we've we haven't seen the cap go up basically in three years. What so it's gone up a million, two million dollars over the past three years, um, if that. And that's what makes the, the, the just the timing of this contract has been so bad. And especially when you see guys like Kale McCarr signing for nine million a year, you're, you're seeing a lot, a lot of the new defenders signing for much, much cheaper deals. If we had seen the cap continue to rise that we had expected and the cap was maybe sitting around maybe 93, 94, 95 million dollars, this contract wouldn't look as bad. Would it still be a big contract? Yes, but it wouldn't look as bad. But I think teams are trying to get Carlson into that like, eight million dollar range that you're seeing a lot of the other top defenders signing for right now which i mean the sharks would have to retain you know three and a half million and i still think that's very feasible for the sharks right i mentioned earlier their cap situation really cleans up after this year uh with some of these old contracts coming off the book they're getting you know they're still gonna have some of the big names like vlasic and hurdle and couture around but you're gonna a lot of the other talent that's gonna be is guys on their elcs or rfa type of guys who are on cheaper deals that you can kind of continue to ride those RFA uh, years and as your other contracts come off the book. So um, I, I think Greer will have to budge how much he's willing to budge um, is it, going to be, I think is, is the, one of the, one of the factors in this big game of chicken. And then the big question comes up, the more you retain, the bigger return you get, or if the less re- you retain the lower return you get, that's, then the game of chicken is really going to go yes. when it comes to that. But that wraps up the second segment coming up to in the show. JD and I are going to do our best to construct a trade that works for both the Penguins and the Sharks. So stick around for that coming up right after this. All right. We're back here in this episode of the Locked On Penguins podcast. I'm Hunter Hodes. That is JD Young. All right. The fun, well, this whole episode has been a blast, but the very fun part has arrived here when it comes to us constructing a trade that works best for both teams. My biggest thing is, obviously there's going to be picks involved because the Penguins have a whole quartet of picks for the next several years. I think when it comes to Kyle Dubas, and this was reported in in Rob Rossi's article a few days ago, and I'd been saying this even before he reported this, the Penguins are going to put lottery protection on their picks. Just in case this year goes bad. I mean, there's you have to always... Put that now we believe me, I learned the hard way about not putting lottery protections on picks. Even you know they got Kenny <laughs> Crosby, Evgeny Malkin, and Crystal Tang, and Ricard Raquel, and all these other guys. You still got to put the protection on. So yep. I think if Dubis does trade a first, and I think he's going to have to in this deal, yes, it's going to have a lottery protection protected lottery protection. Excuse me, 
and maybe some other conditions on it. I don't think it's just going to be a first round pick going and say, Hey, you know, that's it. I don't think it's going to be two first rounders though. I think that's a little bit much. If you're asking I me, I wouldn't be surprised if like what we saw with the Timo Meyer trade where it's a first and then like a conditional second, where if um, Carlson plays, you know, maybe X amount of games or if the Penguins go X, like they get to the Eastern conference finals or whatever. Like, I think you could see something like that. Um, I, for the devils, right. For the, if the devils make it to the Eastern conference finals this year, that second round pick, turns into a first round pick go devils um and then you could see the same thing right if if within the next two seasons or something if that if the penguins make it to the eastern conference finals okay then that and carlson plays you know x amount of games or percentage of games along the way then that pick becomes a first round pick and i think that would that's you're seeing a lot more of that i think nowadays but with, with these trades so that would also make sense i could also see a trade in like 2020, not trade, a pick, excuse me, in 2025 or 2026. Yep. Going the other way, like a, a second round pick, a third round pick, something like that. Prospects wise, JD, you know it. I know it. The Penguins <laughs> don't really have many prospects in the system. They're not going to trade Braden Yeager, who they just picked in the draft. Nope. Maybe Owen Pickering, but I don't think he's going to be traded either. I mean, to have a couple goalies that, that could go in the trade, but. There's really not that many prospects in the system. So if the trade happens here, probably going to see a boatload of picks and some players. The Penguins do have some players that they could offload if the Sharks are just looking for anyone. I mean, the big one is Jeff Petrie, but the, that this complicates it with he has a 15-team no-trade clause. And it sounds like he doesn't want to move to California. <laughs> it's funny. He was just in Napa with his wife. And his, his wife called it one of their happy places. So everyone is starting to speculate when it comes to that. <laughs> Probably doesn't mean too much, but his family is from the Detroit area. Yep. I don't think he's going to want to play on a Sharks team that's going to be rebuilding these yep. next couple of years. If you can maybe flip him to, say, you know, Detroit, Chicago, who has a lot of cap plays. I threw out Nashville out there, too, just for craps yep. and gigs. Some other team out in the Midwest. That makes sense. They have Mikhail Granlund, who they could get bought out after the Drew O'Connor deal is signed, but he could also be involved in a trade here. <laughs> There's I Ty think, Smith. Yeah, I think the, the the kind of way to figure is you're probably you're gonna have to the Sharks are gonna have to take a bad contract back, right? Yes. To help to counter. So whether if it's you know Petrie, if he's willing to come over, or you know, or Granlund, or whomever, um, one of one of those guys. That's that's going to be kind of you're, you got to eat the poop a little bit when you bring it back. But then the Sharks have been really. It's been interesting because, like, if you look at you know the Timo Meyer trade and the Brett Burns trade, they they acquired guys who were pretty close to NHL ready, right? Stephen Lawrence was kind of a tweener guy and ended up being a really solid fourth liner for the Sharks last year. Um, and then E2 Makanemi is probably going to, he made his NHL debut last year, going to be the Barracuda, their AHL affiliate. They're, he's their number one goaltender, and I wouldn't be surprised if he plays, you know, 10 NHL games this year, right? Um, going to the uh, to the team Odin Meyer trade, right? They got Shakira Mukamadoulin, probably going to be playing this year in the AHL then is probably going to be an NHL or the year after I think he's looking for guys who are like those kind of tweener guys who are ready to start kind of making an impact um and that's why a guy like a, a Ty Smith um who's been kind of a tweener for for them uh, I know Pierre Oliver uh, Joseph who's been a, a full-blown NHLer you know uh, guys like that who are young but are, are still kind of reaching their their soon I think that's going to be kind of the key piece coming back for the show at least what my career is going to be looking for is one of the key pieces coming back the problem is they have a thousand left-handed defensemen and both like in their prospect pool and both those guys are i know are, are, are left-handed defensemen but um throw them in there and figure it out the guys can play offhanded so uh i think that that you're looking at a bad contract coming back from from the sharks one of these prospects, a first round pick, and then probably a conditional second round uh, pick that could turn into a first round pick if the Penguins do good things. So that so would make sense. <laughs> There's also some, there, there, I mean, just to put, fill that tweeners stuff yeah. that you were just talking about, JD, the Penguins do have some of those guys down in Wilkesbury who are, I think, really close to NHL ready, but could get some minutes mm -hmm. with the Sharks. Someone like a, man, some fans are probably going to kill me here. So I'm like a Valtteri Pustin who is going to be pushing for a roster spot this camp. I don't think he's going to make it, but 
someone who I think is very close to being an NHL ready. There's also Sam Poulin. That's who the other coming. one who's been kind of, and I know he he missed a big chunk of last year with uh, mental he was health. dealing with, with some mental health issues. So we're hoping he's he's good to go. But I mean, you know, the Sharks that that those are the type of guys I think who could either help the Barracuda right now or be pushing for NHL minutes on a very wide open Sharks roster um, going into this season. So. I think another player who fits that bill perfectly and fans are probably going to eat me alive for this one, <laughs> Alex Nylander. A lot of people have him as an NHL player this upcoming season. He impressed in his small sample this past season. He's going to be pushing for a spot if he is on the team during training camp in the preseason, but I could see him going back to the Sharks based on what you say, JD, because he's probably too good to play in the AHL right now, especially on the Barracuda and on a rebuilding Sharks team. I think he can definitely pot you some goals in the bottom six. He would make some sense in that area. And this is put, throwing this out there. Drew O'Connor, maybe. I, I think he's probably going to be on the Penguins, though, this upcoming season. But you know, that's always an option as well. So I think what we're looking at right now is a first-round pick with lottery protection and other conditions, a yep. conditional second that can turn into a first maybe, a bad contract, whether that's Jeff Petrie or Mikhail Granlund. Granlund could also get bought out. And then, you know, some tweeners, maybe like one of P.O. Joseph or Ty Smith. I would lean towards Ty Smith being sent out because I think P.O.J. has a lot more to grow at this point. And then maybe someone like, you know, a Valtteri Poussin, you know, Saint Poulin, or just other players in that area. So something or like if, that. Or a goalie prospect because the Sharks are still looking to try to f- find a, a goalie prospect. I know the Penguins have do have a couple in their pipeline as well. So, you know, I think that's kind of – there and i think with it comes to salary retention because that's again that's gonna be the big question is i think if you can get carlson in that like eight million dollar range um whether that's 30 percent uh 35 percent something like that and if you look at the brent burns going back to that right the sharks can uh they held or they 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 uh, 33 they retain sorry 33 percent of that so it's a little over two million dollars um for the next now two seasons um going forward but i think if you you kind of just look to the the framework of the brent burns trade um granted it's a little bit more expensive but i think that that's kind of where you're you're at with this so if it's um the two picks and a bad contract and then kind of whichever of the prospects the Sharks want or those kind of tweener prospect guys. Um, I think that's, that's kind of where we're going here. And I, I mean, I know you wouldn't want to Joseph. I would probably, I would probably go Pullian, uh just because I think they've, they've added a lot of defensemen recently. And I, I think they still want to continue to add to their forward group. Um, that would be my, my ideal trade would maybe taking back a guy, you know, Peter, your Granlin, whoever you want to send back, uh, whoever's willing to come back. Um, and then, um, I would take Pullian and then the the first and the second with conditions at, and get whole, you know, if it's 33%, whatever gets Carlson to a, a nice $8 million. So I would take him back at eight, 7.5. Heck, the lower the number, the better, JD. That, that, <laughs> yeah. That's how I see it. <laughs> the lower the number, the better, but then you got you to start throwing some more stuff in. So, but I, I think, uh, I think. I think we've reached the deal. We'll, we'll call up Mike. I'll call up Mike. You call up Kyle, and we'll be like, guys, we got this done. I don't know what's your problem. <laughs> so I'll I'll get his number from a couple of people who I know actually yeah. do have his number. Then you know, there's always the possibility we, if we want to get even more fancier here, that a third team comes in because I think the Penguins could have to do that with their salary cap situation, especially JD if Petrie does not want to go to the Sharks. So then you have to send Petrie to another team, and then you have to send an asset there, probably another pick something like that. But I think we have a trade here that maybe fits both sides. I think so too. And I think it's, it gives the penguins that one last, you know, oomph to try to, especially what's going to be an insane Eastern conference. Uh, it feels like an arms race, uh, especially when you look at what New Jersey's done. Um, you, you know, I think Florida is still going to be competitive. I think Boston's probably going to take a step back, but I mean, this Eastern conference is going to be insane. Um, and the sharks continuing to kind of asset gather which what they've been doing. And, you know, maybe if you buy out Grandland or whatever you do with him, like, and I think he's got two years left on his deal. Yes. Um, you know, if you just kind of, keep trotting him out there or whatever you want to do with him. <laughs> like you can do that or if, play him for a year, buy him out, whatever you have the gap space. It doesn't matter if you're the sharks, the, the, the picks and the prospects are what you, you care about. So. 
Yeah, and if you don't buy him out, you can just watch him pass the puck to whoever is on your team because that's basically the main skill that he still has left as an NHL player. He did not really do much else as a member of the Penguins after Ron Hextall traded for him. But, J.D., I really appreciate you coming on this episode. This was a lot of fun. Hopefully a deal gets done here at some point because I know everyone in this city is just waiting for this to happen. There's plenty of memes out there with Eric Carlson, plenty of other talking points, all that stuff, but I think everyone is waiting to see what happens here so that you know the show can get on the road because we're almost to August at this point. But really appreciate you coming on. What do you have coming up at Locked on Sharks this week? Uh, so we have a very, very special guest. Uh, I'll spoil it for you. You know what? William Eklund making his return to the podcast. So oh. William Eklund will be back on. Uh, that'll be on Thursday's show. Also doing a roster reset. And then have another uh, one of the Sharks' uh, newest draftees coming on for next week as well. So uh, plenty of uh, good interviews and good stuff coming up here at Locked on Sharks. JD has all of the content coming for the show. <laughs> I'll they don't call me a content boy for no reason. So yeah. <laughs> I'll tease something before we sign off here. Locked on Penguins is going to be growing either later this week or next week. And that's all I'm going to say on that. I'm going to stay here, but someone else is going to be coming to the show. And it's someone who has been on the show before, someone who has hosted a Penguins podcast before. And I'm very excited about this. I've been doing this. So, yeah, it's JD, guys. It's, it's JD. <laughs> He's the new co host of Locked on Penguins. But it's someone who I have a lot of respect for. And I've loved doing this solo for the last four years. But I think the show is going to be taken to a whole new level once this person joins it as the co. So look for that announcement either later this week or early next week. But again, thank you all so much for listening to slash watching this episode. Really appreciate it. I'll be back with another episode for you all on Wednesday.